Welcome, beautiful angels, angelic beings disguised as human beings. That's why we feel uncomfortable in our human bodies, I think. I think, not sure. I did not plan on doing a part three, but I will be doing a part three because I want to complete the 11 major body systems as defined by the uh, anatomy and physiology book that I described in the last videos. So go back to part one and two if you haven't seen that yet because this is a continuation and it doesn't make sense. So I just wanna go right to this and go over a couple other things for as a preparation for this course. And this does apply to both uh, my in-person classes and my online class. And uh, keep in mind, I keep getting this question, on uh, in-person students, in-person students, you are not responsible for the online work on Canvas, but you could use it as a reference or for your own knowing. And you can also submit some things through there, but it isn't an, an option and not a requirement. So we are going to go as a continuation, transportation and defense, the sixth and seventh human body systems are the cardiovascular system and the lymphatic, lymphatic system. So it is important to understand how these systems work. And when we're talking about, again, I'm not a doctor, I'm not offering medical advice, but every time we're talking about our health, we need to consider everything here. And our lymphatic system is part of your defense, is part of your immune function. And you gotta make that work. This has an active pump. Your cardiovascular system's got a heart to pump nutrients to your body, but to get the stuff out of your body, the lymphatic system requires movement. That's why you can't just keep on sitting around and expect yourself to get better and feel better. Um, systems eight, nine, and 10, the respiratory system. So this is all respiratory. This is, I'm going through this as it, as it applies to yoga. Every single system applies to yoga. You can't separate these. And as far as the respiratory is concerned, really think about, uh, you could live without roughly food for about three weeks, water for about three days, and then oxygen from our beautiful plant life for about three minutes. So respiratory system is important and your rate, the depth, the quality of your breathing is very much a reflection of the quality of your life. Respiratory uh, digestive system. I, in my experience teaching thousands of college age students, um, many have digestive issues. Our food supply has gotten so contaminated. Our um, eating on the run, eating in a state of stress. I mean, that's an issue. And then digesting your emotions is another thing. Digestive excretion and there is the urinary system. So in any anatomy and physiology book, you could find the, a description of what all of these do. And then last but not least uh, is the reproduction. Reproductive systems for both the female and male. Is your ability to get pregnant, if you're trying to get pregnant that is, is that, um, is it affected by stress? Is it affected by your food? Is it affected by how your immune system is? Uh, maybe, look it up. That's, these are, so these are all things going back to yoga, body, mind, soul, where we carry stuff in our bodies. And does it matter? Like if you, I don't wanna use Google. You go to an, an option, I don't think I mentioned this in the other. So it, it's, instead of using, I have nothing against Google, but if you go to, open here. I hope this is on there. Ecosia.org. I have changed to use this as my search engine because they plant trees for every search. So if you want to for fun, check that out, then check that out. So that's that. And going back to previous videos, back to part one and two, that we I talked about helping you realize how to become self-conscious and that consciousness meaning a good thing, meaning understanding the abilities that you have as a human person and how important it is not to just look at your food and look at your how many shots you get or how often you, I mean, all this stuff matters probably, but also to think about where intentions play a part and where beliefs play a part, where thoughts and the feelings that arise from your thoughts play a part, your forgot a couple here your words especially the declarations you make outside out loud 
about yourself, your I am, are you putting a negativity? Are your 50 to 100 trillion cells responding to your I am statements in an uplifting uh, fashion or is it something that's gonna cause low energy? Thoughts, words, and your actions. Which are your free will human choices? Because we are infinite choice makers. What did you just eat this morning? And why did you do it again? If it was a bad thing or not a great thing, I should say. So does all that matter? Yes, it does. Does all of that affect these systems? Probably. Look it up though. Go to ecosia.org and say yoga, intentions, cardiovascular system. Put any permutation, just see what happens. A reminder, going back to videos one and two, SOS. If you're really wanting to create a change in your life for the, be for the better, can you choose action, choice, to start or stop a habit? Good habit, bad habit. Start one a day and maybe commit to every Monday being like this magical Monday where you're gonna actually do something, commit to it, and no more excuses. And then F4 referred to what I find in thousands of students, virtually all students, deal with, everyone does, I do, everybody does, fight, flight, um, fight, flight, freeze, and fawn response. Look that up and how there is the, what the physiological response is and go back to one, two, three, four, five also. And then also go back to the story I told you about my brother's pet bird named Abbott. And remind yourself that I'm not calling anyone out, but I know that I believed in Santa, the Tooth Fairy, and the Easter Bunny growing up. So I know that my parents lied to me at least three times. So going back to beliefs, you know, where did your beliefs come from? Maybe taking a few steps back and whether it's Maybe, I mean, maybe there's Santa, Easter Bunny, and, and the Tooth Fairy. I'm not sure, actually. But where else could you look at your beliefs and see, like, who told Abbott, the parrot, to call the cat? And, and then who told the person that told Abbott? So just see if you're being like a parrot and just saying something back without really doing your own research. So look it up. Look those things up. Lastly, oh, I wanted to actually, I brought these two books that are on the syllabus. This is a zero textbook cost class, so you're not required for any of this reading, but I just finished this book and I love this book. This Bridging Science and Spirit is by an MD, medical doctor, Manek, Nisha J. Manek, and it is the genius of William A. Tiller's Physics and the Promise of Information Medicine, and he proved scientifically the energetic change to a space where you set good intentions. Pretty cool. I do it on you guys all the time. I just don't tell you. But well, now I just did. And then I do. It, this is this is um, Dr. Bruce Lipton unleashing the power of consciousness, matter, and miracles. And this is called the Biology of Belief. And do go back to which I have gone. I've taken molecular genetics and molecular biology, and look at how much control you actually have as a human being over the expression over gene expression. Yes, DNA does code for RNA, and RNA codes for protein in five to maybe 10% of the time. But you do have control of that other DNA that used to be called junk DNA, which I knew when I was 20 something, well, I'm still 29, but when I was like 24, that that was not true. And it is now proven that it's not true. There isn't junk DNA, that DNA is doing something. And you could control some of these physiological responses by putting more attention here. It's just a fact. And lastly, this is what I'm gonna to get to Roy G. Biv. A lot of people think of chakra work as being like, uh, you know, hocus pocus, ab abracadabra. Maybe it is. But um, I do want you to keep in mind that the chakras are correlate with the electromagnetic spectrum, the portion of, of uh, visible light, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. And I'll get into that and that another time, but I just want you to pay attention to that too, that when you're looking at the chakras, which would be, I'm just gonna use this purple pen, but it would be like from root to crown, red, orange, yellow, green is in the middle, is heart. And then, erase that, blue, indigo, violet. There is a correlation in your body that's at the root base of your spine. This is below the belly button. This is the solar plexus. This is the heart. This is the uh, throat. This is the third eye. And this is the crown. 
It does correspond to the endocrine system and endocrine glands. And you could find that you could develop a yoga practice that kind of perks up and strengthens or heightens the awareness of these areas. I think that's it. So happy semester and let's make 2023 the best freaking year of our lives, right? Yay, thank you. You guys are doing great. Lots of love and light to you.